Ladies and gentlemen, come gather round, come gather round, come gather around. Today, we're building a trailer hitch. Surprisingly, it's very difficult to find a hidden hitch for a 1961 short bed, uh, modified lower rider, custom frame, raised bed floor, pickup truck. Who knew? How weird, especially with a gas tank in the back like this. So I figured with enough hefty pieces of steel, I can make my own. This is two by two quarter wall. I'm not sure why I'm using an angle grinder while my horizontal bandsaw is in the background, but I suspect that I might be doing this while I was waiting for my bandsaw blade to arrive in the mail, because why not? I have the whole thing is being TIG welded together because I like TIG welding. You could probably do it different ways. My MIG welder is only a 140 amp unit and ideally you want one amp per thousandth of thickness of steel. And a 140 amp welder is a little iffy. With the TIG, I think I was running at least 180 amps. I might have been running the full 200. I don't really remember because this was a while ago, regardless of the date that you see in the corner. Uh, I think it was either 2020 or 2021 when I started building this. I don't remember. I finished it 2021. The receiver part was Princess Auto. They seem to have a variety of different receivers that uh, come in a variety of different classes, but they don't appear to be any different. The thickness, the wall thickness of that tubing and everything all seems to be kind of the same. So I just picked the one that looked like it would work for me. Ground off the powder coating because you can't weld powder coating. Clamped everything down good and solid. Clamped it to an extra piece of steel to try and reduce the amount of warping. But it's going to warp just to spite you. There may be different ways you can weld this to reduce the amount of warpage. But whatever I do, the warpage finds a way to say hello in everything I weld. Lucky, lucky me. I've gotten good at heat shrinking, but that's another story. Follow the link above if you'd like to see more on the fantastic 1961 Chevy pickup I've been building for what seems a millennia. Uh, the bottomless pit that it is. In this case, I'm pretty sure I'm using a 332nds tungsten rod, ceramic cup, uh, ER70S2 filler rod. Can't remember. I usually just go to the welding supply store and say, I would like TIG rod steel, please. And this is what they give me. I usually feign ignorance and they usually laugh, so it's good. Now, one of the things you don't always see in videos is once you finish the pass with the TIG, you kind of need to sit there for a period of time for the shielding gas to continue to protect your weld while it's cooling off. Typically, you'd have about one second for every 10 amps, I believe. So if you got 100 amps going through here, you'd have the shielding gas continue for another um, 10 seconds. I think. I hope I said that right. You might have to back it up and play it again. I might have to do it later. I'll add a comment down below if I screwed it up. Generally, that's, that's kind of the ballpark. Later, you'll see me foolishly experimenting with a gas lens. I'm not sure why I did that. Didn't weld so good. Doesn't matter. We'll get to it when we get to it. Also, cleanliness is next to godliness. You'll see I've got a, a stainless steel wire brush there for cleaning up the metal. You want to use, um, well, I've got three. This one's for steel. I have another one for aluminum and another one for stainless. And it should never touch anything but the material you're going to touch it with. So this brush shall only clean steel. And then often I give it a splash of lacquer thinner, or if I'm feeling saucy, acetone. Never brake clean. Brake clean, especially chlorinated brake clean, has wonderful chemicals in there that will kill you. Lucky you. If you find that it's killed you, leave a comment. Um, now we've got to try fit it. I've got the brackets. I think they're 3 8 angle iron made from the same stuff I used in the sheet metal brake. Uh, cut them, fit them, stuck them in the corner. And then I trim the hitch. Now I'm using my 140 Lincoln just to tack it together because I know it fits right here. I don't care how good a measurer you are. If you measure the truck and then go to your bench and allegedly lay it out the way you measured it, it's going to laugh at you the whole time it doesn't fit. So I tack it in place. This is actually not sped up at all, which I think is interesting. Watching me move not sped up to me makes me look like, like who's the old man in the video? 
Do I really move that slow? Depends. All right. Got the big clamps coming down. Heave that puppy out with your old man muscle. And then we'll take it back over to the table and tiggity tig it. thingies to put your chains on. Um, this was, I drew these up in Fusion 360, plasma cut them at work, and you could really do the same thing with a hole saw. In all honesty, the hitch I made for my 77 C10 was just half inch bar that I welded here, across, and back again, just to give it some strength that way. I think this looks pretty slick, so that's what I've done. It will be plug welded in here and then welded around the outside. So we'll clamp her down and give her, see what happens. While I'd love to have my own CNC plasma cutter, I'm not totally ready to give up the floor space that one would require. So for what I do, eh, it's okay. I have one at school. My plasma cutter at home is the cheapest uh, plasma cutter that you could get on eBay. I believe I paid about 162 bucks. It has not exploded yet. I'm still waiting. There's always hope. In this case, you see me using a big honking gas lens. I bought this one really for doing stainless exhaust. It might be on the machine because I was doing stainless exhaust. Stainless really likes a lot of argon. Front, back, center, everywhere. I tell a good joke about it, but all the jokes are gone. This, for whatever reason, worked relatively well for me in some places but once I got around to the other side of these chain hooks hook bracket things 
it just went funky and I couldn't master it. And I switched back to a ceramic cut cup and it did a whole lot better for me. Leave a comment down below if you can have a clue why it didn't work well for me in a welding into a corner. Nevertheless, um, I used it. They're kind of neat. I don't actually look through the glass. I suppose that's the advantage, the Pyrex cup, uh, is, is that you can look through it, but I, I don't. With my own glasses and then the welding helmet and then that glass and it just and oh and I got a cheater lens in my helmet it's too many things to look through and it looks kind of gross here's a place where it kind of went funky on me and uh, if it goes funky just cut it out do it again so I cut it out and I did it again and then I just kind of went you know what screw this I tried I tried to make it work something's going on and I believe I switched to a ceramic cup pretty quick not sure what it was. I did replace the tank, but I switched cups and the thing just welded fine. In fact, really good. So, I don't know. It works now. I'll sure be thinking about that when the hitch breaks off, the trailer changes lanes around me, and I'm going, hmm, probably some porosity in there, I bet. If you ever look at the factory welds on this 61 Chevy I'm working on, the ones that the welds from the factory that hold the frame together, Oh my gosh, I think everybody was drunk. It was, it's the worst looking welds I've ever seen. And yet, the truck has survived 60 years of abuse. So, yeah, I'm sure this will be okay. I've, at any rate, it's all tigged. Then, once it's all finished, I take it outside, I sandblast the whole thing and make sure it's all nice and purdy. And then I like you want to seal this up so it doesn't rust. There are lots of hitches come powder coated, and I could send this out to get it powder coated. I do have a powder coating gun, but my oven's not big enough. I could farm it out, get someone else to do it. However, I do see a lot of kind of gross looking hitches where the trailer hitch got chips in the powder coating, and then moisture got in behind the powder coating and rotted everything else out. So I'm not convinced I really want powder coating. I, I'm not sure how it bites into the metal. Paint tends to bite into the metal, and I think it'll slow things down. So I sprayed a coat of 2K epoxy primer all over the whole thing, followed by uh, two coats of uh, urethane enamel. Three, part, three components to it, I guess. It's, uh, I ran a PPG... Um, Dell Fleet paint. You can see it on the frame. I mean, we've come a long way. The whole truck's been taken apart. The whole frame has been blasted. And uh, now we're putting her together. Got to figure out where the gas tank goes. And we're sliding this puppy home. So the bizarre arrangement of bolts that you see right now that I'm trying to lift up to get the hitch to go through are because the bed floor has been raised four inches. And because of the way I've built all of that and done the bed floor... Uh, I can't get those fasteners in any other way. So they go in first, and I sure hope this works when I set the bed on top of it. I don't know if it will. I hope so. <laughs> At any rate, uh, this last piece was originally welded, sorry, riveted into the frame from the factory, but I made a whack of changes. I will probably put a link up above to where I did the work on fitting the gas tank once I make that video half inch grade eight bolts, some from the sides and some up from the bottom to hold this whole thing in place. Um, I got grade eight washers and I use nylock nuts. Uh, my thinking is the nylock will help bite onto the threads and stop moisture from getting into where the threads are, wicking their way in, corroding, and then making it impossible to disassemble this. Not that I should ever need to disassemble it, but if I, if I do take care to make sure I can disassemble it, I'll never have to disassemble it. It's just the way fate goes. Now, there's my finished trailer hitch. Sorry, I don't have a picture of it on the truck fully assembled. The truck isn't fully assembled yet. You're going to be okay. Thanks for watching. See ya.